Hey Grinding It Up gang, this is Grinding It Up number 58. Yes, that's right, 58. And we're going to do another live play episode today. And please welcome to today's show our little co-host, Todd, Team Online Donkey. He's here for the run good, he's here to slap me on the head if I make some mistakes. Um, and he's here for the hugs and strokes whenever we ship some pots and win some flips. So uh, we recently named him during last Friday's Hangout. I think it's quite a fitting name, Team Online Donkey. If you don't agree, put a, a different suggestion in the comment box. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel to stay up to date whenever I put out some new uh, Hangout dates because I'm going to be doing some more of these in the future and they're going to be mostly on Friday nights, 6 p.m. Central European time. Don't forget that time and place and date. Um, just subscribe to the channel, you'll get a notification whenever I I put up uh, a new Hangout class. So, uh, looking forward to that and uh, doing some more live stuff with you guys on Friday. But for today's session, I'm going to be playing live. Um, I was talking, in last Friday's Hangout, I was talking about what to do in downswings. And you might wonder, why am I so happy, so bright, so shining today? Uh, what has happened? Well, obviously, I've been upswinging. <laughs> That's what happens. I mean, yeah, it does happen from time to time, and it does happen at the right times uh, in grinding it up right now, because we've been through a little bit of a rough patch here at 50NL. Um, but, you know, if you're, I, I forgot to uh, to put out the most important thing to do in a downswing, which anybody should follow suit and this is very very important so listen carefully you gotta run through it yeah that's right <laughs> it's just as simple as that um, I mean if you're down swinging all you gotta do is you gotta run through it I mean what else is there to do you just gotta accept that sometimes you're running bad and if you're running bad you're gonna play a little bit worse you're gonna start making more mistakes um, if you don't stop to review your play if you don't stop to believe in yourself I mean it sounds pathetic but you know you know what I mean it's it's just like that you just gotta push through you just gotta you know put in the volume put in the time don't get tilted too much if you feel like you're getting tilted too much take breaks um, but come back, come back, stay pumped, stay motivated, watch some of my videos, uh, come to the Hangouts on Fridays. It's just, you know, for the motivation. I hope that I can contribute a little to that. So, uh, with that super positive, super happy uh, mental attitude, the PMA, uh, we're going to hop in today's session. I wanted to show you a little brag hand, because that's, uh, that's one of the first, yeah, it's the first one, I think. Not sure, but I think it's the first one. I think we had a straight flush in one of the earlier episodes, but this, watch this. This is also one of the bigger pots that I played. Um, unless my computer freezes. So I 3 bet ace queen suited, villain flats, I flop uh, a royal draw, and I bet the flop, and he calls, and the turn is an ace which is quite nice. Could bet this, but I decided to check behind. Because it's kind of a spot where, I mean, I could bet, but he's probably going to have a decent number of hands that are going to raise me on the turn, like ace-jack, ace-ten, king-queen. So, you know, there's merits to betting and checking. I don't want to discuss that here in detail. Um, it's just one of these spots where, you know, I don't know. You can do both, whatever you like. If you feel like the opponent, you know, it's going to check raise you a lot and don't do it if you feel like he might not or he might call you with a lot worse then go ahead and bet well we have a very nice river here which is the king of clubs and um, I was also I was like salivating here when I saw that pot size bet because a pot size bet at these stakes usually means like he's not folding <laughs> and I'm like yeah that's right that's right <laughs> That's cool. So, yeah, we got it. That's nice. And he had a straight. So, yeah, that was uh, an upside. That was a nice thing that also contributed to that little upswing here. But also, I wanted to talk a little about my bankroll management and my timing before we start. First of all, my bankroll management. Uh, I just got to look into the camera which way I got to turn so that you can actually see Todd. Um, yeah, so 
Bankroll management wise, I think I have made a little bit of a mistake by taking too early 50NL shots. I mean, I'm doing fine. Uh, I'm in the green at 50NL still. I'm about at 200 bucks in profit, which is four stacks. But I also, as you can see here and here and also here, I went through some pretty, pretty rough swings. And I think that starts to happen at 50 NL and above. So I got to be prepared for that. And I think that maybe with the planning out of the challenge bankroll management, uh, I might have made a little bit of a too optimistic approach there. So once I get to 50 NL, I just feel like I need a little bit more cushion to move up there. Because, you know, if we lose 500 bucks, which we did here, and we lost 500 bucks here, it means that we're basically losing um, a third of our bankroll. And that's quite a bit of money. I mean, the bankroll currently is at 1,564. We have uh, 7,400 VPPs this month, which is also quite nice. Um, but you know, if we lose if we lose 500 bucks, it means that we lose a third of our bankroll, and that's I think that's quite a bit too much. And that can happen not on a regular basis, but it happens quite often. And I feel like in these stretches, as we went through some hands, there wasn't. All a whole a whole lot I could do, so you know it happens specifically at Zoom Poker. So I feel like I will be staying at 25 NL some more and um, start taking 50 NL shots as soon as I reach a 2K bankroll mark. All right, that was that about uh, bankroll management and uh, about timing. I think I need to uh, reschedule a bit. Because I feel like I've played yesterday night and the games were awesome. And I think that contributed a lot to me uh, getting where I am today um, and winning that much money yesterday in yesterday's session. Because I just felt that the games were a lot better in the evening, um, starting at 8 p.m. Central European time. So I will probably start and put my second session uh, later into the evening and postpone them and not play in the afternoons. So I'm going to be playing in the mornings and in the, after in the, in the late evenings. Um, and in the meantime, I'm going to be focused on other stuff. But I think that's a good thing to do. So I'll, you know, we'll see how that works out. But it's just an experiment. I'll let you know. I'll keep you up. I'll keep you updated. So uh, for today's session, we got the penalty button here. Uh, five minute penalty. Uh, let's get started. I mean, without further ado, I'll just jump into the Zoom games. Right. So uh, let me talk a little bit about preflop. You know, if you've watched my videos, if you watch my live trainings, I'm in kind of that spot. Oh, I need to flat call here. I'm in kind of that experimenting situation where I like to experiment a lot with preflop sizings, just because I know that there is no real perfect sizing yet, or that might not be a perfect sizing. Um, so I feel like. You can experiment a lot. I mean, I've, I've been experimenting with min raising, and uh, I get quite a bit of folds there with min raises, so I think that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna be betting here. Probably gonna bet turn and bet river if he check check checks flop flop and turn. Um, gonna bet the river. Not too happy about that river, but you know, I got two pair, so and I'm definitely gonna bet this river. I mean, I can represent some draws that got there, queen 10, 10-8 ten, uh, got there, I can value bet a queen. So I think I should be betting this river and bluff it. That works out. So yeah, I basically started min raising in every position, but that will switch around soon, I guess, because, you know, you never know with what I'm up to. Sometimes I do 3x from every position, and then I do 2.5x from the button, and then I'll switch back to, I don't know, uh, 2xing, 2.5xing. I just feel like you should experiment with that a lot and just see how people react and what you can get out of it. I mean, the upsides to it is that against these short stacks that like to 3 bet a ton, you save some money. So that's always a good thing. The other downside to it is people get better price to play with you, which means that they'll make less of a mistake preflop. And you'll only profit if they make a lot of more mistakes post flop. So if they're good post flop players, if they're decent post flop players, it probably pays um, to make it bigger pre. So here I'm just gonna check it down. 
probably taken a stab on the river if he checks to me. Yeah, that seems like a reasonable situation to just take a stab. I don't think he's going to call here. So that was just a delayed, delayed seabed. <laughs> super delayed seabed. The delayed seabed is on the turn, and the super delayed seabed is on the river. So yeah, we're going to pot it here with ace-king suited. Going to try and isolate the, the weaker player. Uh, that is a, a previous student of mine. He's a Poker School Online member, so interesting to see what happens here. Um, I think I will just bad call this flop. I mean, it's such a dry board, and I have two overs with the backdoor flush draw. Now on the turn, since he snap called my flop bet, I think I should check fold the turn now. Doesn't look like a good turn card for my hand, so I'm just going to check and give it up. Um, also, I don't think he's going to fold any pair now. I think he's, I mean, he seems like a recreational player, so he's definitely going to hero call like pocket fives or whatever. So I just feel like I need to check fold on the turn, which is unfortunate, but, you know, not much we can do there. Still think betting flop is profitable on a board like this, because it makes him fold all his no equity hands, and it kind of protects us from getting bluffed. Maybe you could have bet smaller, like one third of the pot. But you know, if you if you do that, then chances are that you might just induce a induce a bluff raise some of the time. So here, yeah, easy fold. So I feel like yeah, betting half pot there is fine. Don't know this guy, shorty, and definitely three betting with ace king suited here. And also gonna be happy getting it in against this guy. I mean he seems super loose in aggro. Nine seven suited. Uh well ace king's definitely gonna be three bet. I can make it smaller due to stack sizes. Uh this can be a call or a fold against a tight I mean this guy is pretty tight, so I think I should be folding. Nine eight suited I would call mostly. So I think I'm fine with that. All right, that's a decent board for Ace King. I'm gonna be betting this flop for sure, and I don't think that we should get messed with here too much. He check raises this flop, so he probably has a pair. I don't think people are bluffing, um, so he probably just wants to get it in with me, which I don't like. So I'm just gonna end up folding this, I guess. Yeah. Seems like these short stacks are just happy to get it in with any pair there. So, since I have a lot of pairs in that spot, I don't need to bet call it off with Ace King. We'll have some equity there, but probably not enough. So, Jack Nine, I could open, but I got this short stack in my back. So, I feel like I don't want to open too wide there. 4 5 suited could be an open. Um, specifically because of the the blinds and yeah nice <laughs> that's that's a nice play we like to see that so uh that's decent it's a good spot for us we're gonna check raise this flop it's a very good flop for us I mean I have top set and he can't have much but I do want to stack his over pairs and I would want to put his over pairs into tough spots and his flush draws and I could try and check call in this situation, but given that um, I gotta get in a lot of money still, I just feel like I should be trying to to do just that. And even though I will get a lot of folds from overcards, I don't think I make a ton more money by just you know um, check calling, slow playing, and trying to to get him to hit something on the turn on the river. So this guy Mindonks into me, 7-5 suited, again pretty close, like the 9-7. This guy is a lot looser, so I feel like it's only 55 hands, so I'm just going to fold this. Um, he donks again, I pick up an open-ended, he, don he donks half pot, which is uh, quite a size that I should call. Um, given the price that I'm getting, I could raise this turn, but I don't think he's going to fold a queen if he has one. So I just feel like I, I can just call half pot and see if I get there and if I don't I'm just gonna fold. He's gonna have a queen a lot and I don't think he's gonna he's gonna lay it down so I'm gonna lay it down instead. Let's 
six four suited could be in defend now it's just going to be a fold uh ace queen suited is going to be a pretty standard three bet i could also flat and try and keep this guy in the pot but i think i think i think it's better to just uh to just three bet it for value so yeah uh here i could check or bet i think i'm just going to check spike jack which is nice um since he bets so small i'm going to raise i think i'm good i mean he's going to have a lot of bluffs so i'm just going to call um and make a decision on the river based on his size that he uses um now i'm going to definitely raise um going to probably even stick it in yeah i'm going to make it 450 i think that's fine seems like a weaker player Ooh, so he had the nuts and he just called, which is nice. <laughs> so I'm happy I didn't lose my stack there, which is cool. Recreational player min opens. I'm going to try and see a flop here with him. Yeah, that's always nice if you don't lose the whole the whole bunch. So thanks for that, man. <laughs> thanks for saving the grinding it up gang a little bit of a a little bit of money there. So I'm going to bet half pot here. He's going to have a queen ton, I guess. So feel like I should try and maybe even bet smaller, maybe make it 75 cents or one dollar. <laughs> it's always cool if you don't lose the, the full amount. So getting three bet. This guy doesn't three bet a whole bunch, but I mean we have kings, so we're gonna full bet and uh, be happy if we get it in. Uh, okay, so he flats. If he flats, I think we're going to check this flop and check shove most likely and just have him bet this uh, now he checks back which is interesting gonna bet half pot now hmm. and then just jam the river ooh ooh that's weird that's weird so would he do that with queens? I don't know. He flatted preflop. I think I'm just going to call and let him stick it in on the river. And I'm going to 3-bet here. Just hope that he bluffs. <laughs> and he's insulting me. Uh, why does he insult me? Okay, yeah. That's why. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, sorry, bro. <laughs> sorry if I upset you there. <laughs> That's, uh, so, yeah, I flop pretty nicely in this session here. I'm gonna raise it, just thinking about the size. I mean, it's pretty draw heavy and coordinated, so I'm making it 450, I think. I'm making it pretty big, just so I can get it in on a, a brick turn. Also, have you seen that we can actually now see if somebody's playing on the iPad or the iPod, which is nice. So we know that they are not actually having any holder manager or poker tracker running. So, yeah, I think I didn't make it quite big enough, but I'm just going to get it in now. Um, here with 5, Z3 bet me preflop. I could call, but I never know what these recreational guys are up to, so I'm just going to just gonna fold make a nitty fold making a nitty fold against people you don't know or people who you think are recreational players not a bad plan I could three bet the King Jack suited uh, but we're deep so I think I should just call deep I don't like to have too big of a three betting range from out of position because the deeper you get the uh, the more tricky it can get and the more the opponent actually has the advantage that will have a position so uh, if you're deeper stacked, watch out some free content guys here. Um, if you're the deeper the deeper stacked you get, the less important initiative is, and the more important position gets. So, if I'm deep stacked against somebody I don't know, and he has position on me, I'll be less likely to three bet him with marginal hands, because if I three bet him, he got a big advantage over me. He can flat a lot of hands in position since we're deep stacked, 
and he can do a lot of nasty stuff to me post flop even though I have the initiative when we're shorter initiative in shorter stack sizes shorter terms initiative is highly important uh, deeper stacked not so much so threes here this is pretty close uh, this is pretty close uh, I think I'm gonna fold this now we flop again wow it's just the run continues flop top set but what can he have I mean yeah just just gonna bet 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 I mean you can have jack 10 certainly but again we have a lot of money to play out so I just you know we'll just be betting half pot and if he raises I can still call and if he raises I think he's gonna be likely to have jack 10 a lot but he's also gonna have some two pairs um, so I can like call turn and then call river if he bets big or even bets I think there's ace queen and ace king still in his range king queen sometimes so I think a small I like a smaller bet so yeah going to fold this so we already broke the 20 minute mark and I didn't even hit the penalty button yet I hope you uh, you're not too upset about this but since I hit it in the beginning just for the lulz <laughs> Just because I wanted to do it, uh, I'll just you know I'll just add on five minutes. So I'll make it to twenty-five minutes this session. So Jacks going to three bet. I mean against the min raise, I don't need to fear that much. She's probably gonna flat call. Um, going to see bet my gut shot here. And folding jack five off. So I flop second pair. I'm going to see bat half pot as always. I think I just want to make life easy here. I don't want to make it too complicated by checking back and then get into a tough spot. And I get check raised. Um, I can release second pair here. He's going to have a lot of flush draws, I guess. Well, there's not much we can do. I mean, we could have checked behind, but there's a lot of bad turn cards that can come up. So I think betting there is the way to go. Most people just fold. And if I get check raised, I mean, it's tough to put him on a strong hand there. Uh, oh, that guy pots it. I have a gutter and one over, so I feel like I should be calling at least once. Um, and now he checks it back. That's weird. I don't like to bluff recreational players. I'm just going to check and give up. Um, I mean, I could bluff here, but, you know, these guys are just so, so crazy. I just never, you never know what they're, they're probably not going to fold. Like, I see recreational players make a call. On a paired board, they're just going to call a pair of eights or a pair of nines or whatever. And, you know, you never know for what reason they do that. They just suspect you're bluffing. So, don't really worry too much about giving out pots to them because the times that you hit your hand they're still gonna pay you off I mean if you have, if they have pocket eights there and I'm bluffing them they're making money off me if they have pocket eights there and uh, I make my hand and I bet it and they call they're losing money to me so that's how I see it and that's how I play it pretty much I'm gonna fold this All right gonna play a couple more hands and then wind down on the session so look I think we should we should have broken even in this session because I lost a I lost a bit with a hand uh, before we even started um, I have three bad ace queen I squeezed ace queen and over call the flat it the flop came queen 10 10 and yeah that went to like half a stack or something yeah we pretty much broke even so that's fine this guy seems actually seems to be a reg actually so he flats a min raise pre and he tanks a lot tanking is kinda I feel like I'm thinking I, I just feel like checking back is good here I, I can't tell you why this is like one of these spots where I'm in this kinda twilight zone where I don't even know why I'm doing what I'm doing <laughs> I can't even explain it just gonna you know check it back sometimes just check it back just like that Jack 10 off, going to be a fold. All right, so um, going to be taking off. I want to remind you guys, uh, Friday night is going to be the next hangout. So please 
come if you can make it. It would be awesome. We'll be hanging out. I might even play some live. I don't know yet because I think that YouTube streams with a delay of like five seconds or something. So it should actually be fine if I play Zoom games. But I don't know yet. I'll, I'll give it a little try maybe on Friday. And other than that, if you have any hands that you want me to go over, on Friday nights we're doing the Hangout, the review. So uh, the doc is going to be able, the Grinding It Up doc, is going to be able to review your hands. So if you have any Boom hand history links, any uh, PokerStars hand histories that you want to give me for review, just tweet it to me using hashtag Grinding It Up. Hashtag grinding it up, gang. It's very important that you use the hashtag because if you don't, I'm going to be entering the hashtag at Twitter and I'm going to be looking through all the grinding it up posts that you guys made and then just review the hands uh, one per person. Uh, review one per, one hand per person um, that has the grinding it up hashtag. I'm only review, re reviewing those. Um, speaking of bloopers, now that I just had had that struggle with speaking. Uh, I saw that Andre, my teammate Aquimbra, Aquimbra, he uh, he put out a video with all the bloopers from his video blog, and I actually have just started to uh, record all the bloopers. I usually just dismiss them, but I felt like they were really funny, and uh, I loved Andre's uh, video from uh, like cutting them all together. And I will I will be doing that for grinding up too. I think it's gonna be fun, and I. Just start recording all the bloopers. You won't. You guys won't even believe what I what I tend to do when I warm up for these grinding it up videos. It's it's a lot of fun, even for me. <laughs> all right, so I uh, guess I'll see you guys on Friday. Uh, always stay motivated. Don't forget, if you're on a downswing, run through it. Very important. Keep that in mind and keep grinding it up, guys. See you Friday. Bye bye.